Hi, this video is to demonstrate setting up an API 20E for Enterobacteriaceae at the Lancaster General Hospital in the Microbiology Department. If you are working or doing your clinical at another hospital, while the basics of this demonstration will be the same, there might be some little differences as far as if somebody uses saline versus water, etc. So just keep that in mind. The API 20E test is used for biochemical identification of Enterobacteriaceae and other non-fastidious oxidase negative gram negative rods. Make sure that it is a, um, an oxidase negative lactose fermenter. If you have a non-lactose fermenter that is oxidase positive, then the API is not for you. So before you set up your API, you want to do an oxidase test on your specimen because you're going to need it for the uh, final calculations. If your specimen is a non-lactose fermenter, which means if it's clear on McConkie and is oxidase positive, don't do an API. It won't help you. The API, about half of the reactions are sugars, and if you have a non-fermenter, those sugars will make absolutely no difference to you. They will all be non-reactive. So you want to use uh, like a rapid NF or some other comparable test if you have a non-fermenter that's oxidase positive. So document your oxidase result because you'll need it for your API. These are the things that you will need. Again, if you work in a different hospital other than Lancaster General, um, these might be a little bit different for you as far as the distilled water versus saline, etc. But this is basically what you'll need. One thing um, I did want to explain was here is an uninoculated API test strip and you can see that all of the chemicals are basically dried to the bottom of the wells. The, you see those little um, oval things. The bottom part of it is called the well and that's the part that goes up until the line there. And then above the line is the cupule. For the most part you will be, well, all of them you will fill up to the middle line and some of them you will fill above. So if you see, for example, you'll see the CIT and the VP and the gelatinase that have an underline under them and then they have the vertical lines um, on either side. Those are the ones you fill up, you fill the cupule with specimen as well. And then the ones that are simply underlined like the ADH, the LDC, the ODC, the H2S and the um, urea, those you will fill the up to, up to the cupule, up to the cupule but not in the cupule, just fill the well with specimen and then you will add three drops of mineral oil on top of that to create an anaerobic environment for the biochemical reaction. So we're going to go ahead and show the video of the actual procedure for setting up the API. So to begin, we're going to fill up the waffles on the bottom of the holder with some distilled water and this will create a humid environment during incubation. You can put your test strip in and you want to make sure that you label your test strip side there with your patient information, either with a label or with a Sharpie. You want to take your specimen, which needs to be pure, with one isolated colony. You take one isolated colony with the swab, sterile swab and you emulsify it in a 5cc vial of saline. Hang on to the swab, don't throw it away. You vortex the inoculum and then you take your swab and you create a purity plate to make sure that tomorrow you know that you actually have a pure specimen in your API. So go ahead and use the swab, make a well, and then you take a sterile loop to do a quadrant streak. And then you will incubate that overnight, uh, 18 to 24 hours, in a CO2 incubator. Okay, so now you open up a sterile pipette and you draw out almost as much of your specimen as you can because you're going to need all of it. Make sure you use sterile technique with this because if you get any kind of contamination, your results will not come out correctly. 
So the best way to do this to make sure you don't get bubbles is to hold it at a 45 degree angle and put your pipette up against the left hand side of the well and gently just pipette slowly into the well. You really don't want any bubbles because if you get a bubble in the bottom of it, you won't actually have any specimen touching the chemicals to have any kind of reaction. If you do get a bubble, you can either use a sterile loop and try and get it out or just tap the whole API strip gently to see if you can pull the bubble out. As you can see it's going gently down the, the left side just to the very very top of the well not all the, not into the cup yield just to the end of the well. Now this is the part we talked about earlier and you can see the ones that there's ones that are underlined and there's ones that have like the cup around it have underlined and two vertical lines on either side and you can see so the ones that have the cup are the ones that you want to fill the cupule completely with the specimen so there's the citrate and the VP and the gelatinase you, you want to fill those with a specimen all the way. You want to fill the entire cup you'll fill full. You don't want it overflowing though because you're going to have to add reagent tomorrow. So you just want it full but not overflowing. Then the ones that are completely, that are just underlined without the vertical lines, the ADH, the LDC, the ODC, etc., citrate, and urea, those you're going to want to put three drops of mineral oil on top. So you lay it down flat and then, or well, you can hold it whichever way is easiest for you. You can hold it, put three drops, one, two, three, into each of the ones with the, just the underline. Okay, then after that, you put the lid on it and you incubate it 18 to 24 hours in an air incubator. Thank you for watching and look for part two of this presentation on reading and resulting an API strip.